Hey everyone, welcome to Saxbeard's Long Tones for Saxophones video. I'm going to briefly explain why I think you should do them, explain the process, and then actually demonstrate how to do them on a saxophone. You probably aren't aware that I founded an admin a group on Facebook for beginners and intermediate saxophonists called Saxophone Beginners and Intermediates. I know it's a very creative name which today has about 43,000 members from all over the globe. I, I recommend, highly recommend that you guys join it if you haven't already, uh, full of great information and a lot of fun. Purpose of the group was to give lesser experienced players and beginners uh, a place to ask questions and uh, post videos without being ridiculed. A lot of the groups out there I, I found were pretty harsh uh, on beginners. So the most common questions that uh, the players in the group uh, will ask revolve around tone, intonation, and control. Uh, things like, how do I get a more interesting tone? Or how come certain notes are out of tune? And, and what can I do to fix that? Things like that. Uh, as we allow pro and more advanced players in the group to help guide these lesser experienced players, oftentimes they'll post responses uh, along the lines of, do long tones. But then that leads to, well, what does do long tones even mean? I, I think of long tones like an athlete would think of going to the gym and uh, building muscle. Uh, it helps in multiple different ways, some of which are tone building, uh, building endurance, uh, helping to fix intonation issues, building control over the instrument, uh, your volume levels from lo uh, lowest to, to loudest and, and so forth. Inevitably, there will be pushback uh, from some players that feel that long tones aren't necessary, uh, and they're welcome to that opinion. Uh, but in my experience, every player who's playing and especially whose tone I've admired all had one thing in common. Uh, they do and did and continue to do long tone exercises. They spend a good amount of time on it. So how do we do them? Uh, I'm gonna explain the program that I do and uh, what you should be focusing on while doing them. These exercises will require a metronome. If you don't have one, Google has one built into their site. Just search metronome. Uh, and if you'd like to work on the intonation as well, I suggest getting tonal drones. Um, it, it basically gives you a pitch to listen to so you can tune by ear. Uh, I use something called the tuning CD by Richard Schwartz. It should be available on Apple Music, Spotify, and all the streaming services. Uh, and that's really all you need. Uh, so what you do is you set the metronome to 60 beats per minute, uh, set the tuning drone, if you're gonna use one, to whatever concert pitch uh, to start with matches your low B flat. So if you're playing tenor or soprano, that would be concert A flat. If you're playing alto or baritone, that's uh, concert D flat or C sharp, depending on how they have it listed. Uh, so ideally, you would do this exercise for each note over 12 beats. Uh, if you can't do 12 beats with one breath, do 10. If you can't do 10, do 8. Uh, the idea remains the same throughout. You want to start on beat 1 as quietly as you can possibly play that note. Build the volume up to your maximum when you're halfway through. So beat 6 if you're doing 12 beats, beat 5 if you're doing 10, etc. And then after you hit that apex, you want to start decrescendoing. You want to start lowering your volume to where you're back to a whisper at beat 12 or beat 10, whatever it, it is. Um, do this while matching your tone to the drone. Do not allow your volume level to affect your intonation. Uh, that is, a lot of that has to do with air support. Make sure that you've engaged your core this whole time. Here's what you need to focus on while doing them. Pay attention to what your body is doing and, and listen for your tone and your tuning. Uh, your diaphragm, your core muscles need to be engaged while you're doing these. You want to push air from here. Uh, you breathe in from your diaphragm and you push air from here. What well, you want to feel like it's coming from your diaphragm, even if technically it's not. This helps with air support. You've probably heard that term thrown around. Uh, your entire body needs to be relaxed while you do these. No tension in your shoulders, necks, uh, neck, arms, face, jaw. Uh, it's critical that you're entirely relaxed while, while playing, allowing only your diaphragm 
uh, and your big airstream to do all the heavy lifting here. Pay close attention to your embouchure, which is uh, the muscles of your mouth uh, that, that make up what goes around the mouthpiece. Saxophones produce tones by allowing the reed to vibrate. If you are too tense and biting with an upward jaw pressure, uh, you'll muffle the reed from vibrating and you'll end up with a, uh, the, hey, there's a blanket in my bell type of sound. The only pressure should be slightly inward from the corners of your mouth, just enough to kind of hold on to the mouthpiece. The embouchure's uh, purpose is basically to not allow the air you're blowing to escape from around the mouthpiece. Uh, you just want to seal around the mouthpiece, and um, you want to remain loose, especially in your jaw, to allow your reed to vibrate. Uh, anything more than that, in my opinion, is detrimental to tone production. Saxophone tone, in my opinion, uh, while you do these, these exercises, it, it helps greatly if you have the sound or tone of someone whose tone you admire in your head while doing these exercises. Uh, when I was doing mine, or still doing mine, I, I have Dexter Gordon's sound in my head. Uh, do I sound like Dexter? No, but I'm trying to get into that ballpark at least. Um, experiment uh, with different oral cavity shapes while you're doing these, like ooh, ah, e, and you can you can feel your tongue going in different positions when you do all of those. Um, listen to what that does to your tone. Does it make any difference? Does it change your intonation? Uh, raise the back of your throat like you're yawning. Keep that embouchure relaxed throughout all of this, just firm enough to keep the air from escaping. If you find you're having trouble getting sound out without a lot of biting pressure upward, your reed's too hard. Uh, drop down to uh, drop down a half strength uh, to where the reed will vibrate from your air, and you don't have to bite it. You're basically when you bite, you make the reed closer instead of leaving it open. So when you're done with low B flat, you'll change the tuning drone up um, one half step. So you're going to go from B flat to B. So you're going to go from A flat to A if you're on tenor. You're going to go from, from D flat to D if you're on alto or berry. Uh, you're going to do this same exercise that I described from low B flat all the way to high F sharp. And then you're going to do them, once you get to high F sharp, you're going to come back down all the way down to low B flat. And then you're done. It should take around 30 minutes to do the entire exercise if you're doing 12 beats per note. If you do these consistently every day, if possible, uh, you'll 100% begin to see a huge difference in only a few weeks. Um, long tones literally changed my saxophone life. Uh, I hope you'll give this exercise an honest try and report back with your progress or ask questions. And uh, now I will demonstrate a few notes so you can see so you can see exactly how this goes. <laughs> 